The U.S. Energy Department says the amount of sunlight that falls on the United States in one day is more than twice the energy used by Americans in a whole year. Dell and Carol Jones decided to harness some of that energy at their Fort Myers home. The Joneses have electrical power available from the local utility company, so technically they are on the grid. But they prefer to reduce their energy demands on conventional power sources like coal, gas, and oil. So they've chosen to draw most of their electric power from solar installations. I think a lot of people immediately, when they hear the word solar, they immediately move toward photovoltaics. And there's really two groupings of solar. There's photovoltaics, which are PV, which is solar electric systems. Then there's also solar thermal, and that's usually used to heat water, swimming pools, you can do air conditioning, industrial process heating, and other applications that would typically be using natural gas or oil to generate heat for some process. So really when you look at photovoltaics, within photovoltaics there's two groupings, and that's solar electric on-grid and solar electric off-grid. And on-grid, called grid tie, that's uh, what you would do where you produce solar energy converted directly to AC, alternating current, to be used directly in the house without storing it in batteries. So exactly how does the sunlight get converted into the electricity we need? You have a system on your house that has panels, solar electric panels, and the sunlight energy from 93 million miles away, it takes a couple days to come down and hit your panel, but once it does, magic happens, but it's a very you know technical, scientific alteration of sunlight energy that converts to electrical energy up in your panels, and it comes down through wires and into what is called an inverter. These are inverters. And what this does, it converts the electricity from the panels into usable electricity that can then be fed right into the electrical system of your house. So this morning when I got up, I made the morning coffee with solar energy. Everything in this house, the lights that we switch on to read our papers, the big items in our house like our refrigerator, which is a big energy hog, and our air conditioner, which is an even bigger energy hog. This all uses solar energy. In Florida, solar energy is most commonly used to heat swimming pools. Swimming pool heating is actually very simple. Normally what happens is the water comes from the pool, goes through a filter to a pump, and then directly back to the pool. By putting in a, a solar pool heating system, you put in a valve that basically redirects the water after it's been filtered up to the solar collectors that are on the roof. It goes through these collectors, which are actually very low cost. They're typically plastic collectors. And the number of collectors is usually about almost the size of your swimming pool surface area. So the water goes through those collectors at a very fast speed and is returned to the pool uh, two and three degrees warmer. And then that happens several times a day. Usually you can turn the entire volume of the swimming pool over in about eight hours. Steve McCartney's been working in the solar industry for more than 30 years, bringing much needed electricity to people in developing countries. He just recently returned from New Orleans, where he helped organize the solar installations for homes being built as part of Brad Pitt's Make It Right initiative. This is one of the easiest ways to get involved with solar electricity. This is a small backup power system. Uh, you could almost picture it as replacing your gasoline generator. It's got the solar panels which are generating uh, electricity directly from sunlight. And inside it's got a battery bank and an inverter which takes the battery power and turns it into the current that can run your radio, a TV, some lights, home appliances. Uh, we used something very similar to this in the aftermath of Hurricane Charlie. It was the only power we had for three or four days while we waited for service to be restored. And it worked perfectly and quietly and without pollution. Both the federal and state governments are offering incentives to homeowners buying solar installations. Right now is actually about the best it's been since 1980s. We have two major incentives for homeowners. There's a Florida rebate, which is the key one. It pays you $4 a watt for your solar installed capacity up to a certain amount. And then there's a federal tax credit, which is 30% up to about $6,600. You, you get $2,000 back tax credit. You can lock in the price of electricity that you buy from the solar at today's rate pretty much for the next 30 years. So it's an excellent time for solar. Just west of North Fort Myers, the island of Kayacosta is accessible only by boat or passenger ferry. 
Out here in Cayo Costa, people have a limited choice in electricity. There's no power lines, so they can either go without electricity, generate their own by burning fuel and generators, or use solar power. And most everybody who's chosen to live out here or build out here has decided to use solar power because of its economics and not wanting to deal with fuel. The original pioneers in solar electricity use in the United States were people who chose to live in remote areas where the power lines didn't go. So we're, we're going to meet some right now. Hi, Hi Steve, Denise. Come on in. How are you? Thanks. Good, come on in. Denise Daggett and Tom Lanners built their home in the early 90s. The interior of the house sustained considerable damage from Hurricane Charlie. And they are slowly rebuilding with the help of their solar power. Here's our system. We are completely off the grid, unlike some of, some of the other solar homes you're seeing. We go from the solar panels to the batteries to the inverters. We have a system that is fully capable of supplying all the power we need to our home. Refrigeration, lights, anything we can use in a normal home, and it's completely wired like a, your normal home on the mainland. Even on a cloudy day, the solar batteries are constantly being charged up. 53. With this battery system that we have in our house, it was designed to maintain power for up to five days if the sun is not as strong as it should be or if it's just a cloudy, stormy time of the year. One of the problems of living on the barrier islands is getting fresh water. We have designed a system that has a separate solar panel that goes directly to a 12-volt pump that pumps continuously during the daylight hours and fills a 2,200-gallon tank stored under the house, which is more than a sufficient amount of water to use not only for the home, but also for the gardening around the property. To live in this house, you wouldn't know that you're on a solar system. It's wired like a conventional home, so we have anything and everything we'll ever need by living out here, except we're in paradise. It's an exciting time for solar energy technology, and whether it's to heat a swimming pool, power an emergency generator, or supply the needs for an entire home, we can count on the sun being around for a while.